Welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. Up first, news and updates. The first news item is, we've sold out, we have corporate sponsorship. I'm rich! Yes! Yes! Finally! Okay, not quite. Um, we've got a local game store here on Prince Edward Island that has agreed to sponsor us by supplying us with the games for our video series, which is great because, you know, games aren't cheap. And uh, what we're going to do in return for them is show a quick 15 second ad at the beginning of the video series that they sponsor for us. So hopefully you won't find that too annoying. At least it's relevant to gaming. And also I would encourage you, if you're on Prince Edward Island and you're looking for a great game store or you want to purchase this game or any other game, check them out. They're in Summerside Prince Edward Island. They're a new store. It's fantastic. I just went over there the other day. And uh, really great people, great prices, and a great gaming area. So I'm jealous because they're on the other side of the island and, and I wish I could go there more often. Also, if you don't realize, you can watch these videos in 720p in high resolution. It'll allow the components to show up better and you can see how good of a shaving job I did. Also, when I'm reading the monster tactic cards, I'm only going to read the tactics that are relevant for the move that we're facing. If it's a monster that we've already had out on the table before, that will just help save a little bit of time and we can pack more information into these video series. I try to keep them within 10 minutes if possible, so I'm hoping that will help shorten things up a little bit without you losing any valuable information. And for our next segment, we have some corrections to make. In the last video, I forgot to remove the day's token from our wizard. The day's condition uh, only lasts as long as your hero phase. At the end of the hero phase, it's automatically removed, and at the end of Heskin's hero phase, I forgot to remove that. We'll do it now. The next correction comes from Michael Swaddling. He writes, the damage tokens for the monster should go on the board, not on the monster card. This is an excellent point. In fact, the damage tokens, as you can see, have a little carved cutout, which fits perfectly around the base of the models. And that's where the damage tokens should go, not on the card. And there's an excellent reason for this, and it's not just the aesthetics. When we attack monsters, we're attacking the models, not the cards. And there's, that's an important distinction, because if I destroy this monster, let's say it's the rogue's turn, and I destroy this monster, I don't own an Orc Smasher card. That's not one of the monsters that I activate during my turn. So what I would do is I would go clockwise around the table of players and find the first person who has the Orc Smasher card, and I would remove that card. And that was not necessarily the Orc Smasher card that brought this model out. Um, but that's how the rules go. You remove the next card in order around the table, unless you yourself control an Orc Smasher card, then you would just remove that card. So there's a game rule reason for it, and it means great. You look on the table, you can see who's damaged a lot more easily. And there's another um, YouTube user, a Black, or is it Black Belt Gaming. I uh, just discovered this recently. He's been actually making lots of short little videos to cover uh, frequently asked questions about this game. I'm going to try to remember to put a link to his video series in this description. You should check it out. Very helpful. He does a great job of explaining things. Major Malfunction 10 writes in, you get two hit points when you level up. It's written at the top of the card. So when you level up at the top of the card, what it says is, increase your hit points by two, your AC by one, and your surge value by one, and choose an additional daily power. Now, I disagree that this means you increase your current uh, hit point value. I believe what it's saying is you're increasing your, um, your hit point stat. In other words, the upward capacity you have for hit points, just like the same for your surge value and your AC. Um, the wording is not explicitly clear. I think either of us could be right. I imagine if you poll the room of 10 people, more people would agree with him. But I still think I'm right. So if someone can figure out uh, for sure, officially from Wizard, uh, what the ruling on that would be, I'd be happy to adjust that. And maybe, maybe you know, it's just that evil keeper in me from the last Mansions of Madness series. I'm not really on the hero side still a little bit. I don't know. Um, now we can move on to questions and answers. Uh, the first question comes from Futant3113. How much time do you spend scripting these videos out? There's a very good organizational flow to them. Are you a teacher? Thank you very much. I'm not a teacher, but I love teaching games. Um, I spend probably more time than I should scripting these out, but probably less time than I need, which is why we still get some errors in here. Rebel Mage writes, can you move through occupied spaces? And perhaps, if so, only through hero spaces or also through monster spaces? Excellent question. You can move through hero spaces with your heroes, not through monster spaces, uh, but you have to make sure when you end your turn, obviously you're on an empty space. Um, next one is from Sir Fragalot92. If a character is on the corner of a tile where it's adjacent to two edges, should you either draw two tiles or choose one to reveal? If you're on a corner, you just pick which, uh, which side you want to reveal. You don't bring out two more tiles. 
Fonzie the Capybara writes, can we get a look at the wizard's cards next? I'd like to see how a magic user differs from the other classes. Definitely. At the end of this video, I'll show you the stats and the powers and abilities of our wizard character. Cartoons 80s, 90s writes in with the last question. In the introduction of the videos, it shows your party playing four games. What is the title of the last game? It is the fantastic, stupendous, super duper Space Hulk 3rd Edition. This game has got by far the best components of any game I've ever seen and has brilliant rules. They're just really elegant. It's an out of print game. And let me take a moment to plug another really great game store. If you're in Prince Edward Island, you've got to come check out Game On. But if you're in New Hampshire, make a special trip to Salem and go check out Myriad Games. The people there are fantastic. Dan, the owner there, he, uh, he shipped the game over to me uh, after I got home from visiting their store. I, I didn't pull the trigger when I was there to buy that game, and uh, he shipped it over at a very reasonable price. They've got excellent reward system there, a beautiful array of games, and they support all friendly local gaming stores. They've just got an excellent attitude towards games and the gaming community. So definitely check out Dan and Myriad Games. It'll be well worth your visit. That ends our question segment. Listen, let me know what you think of our Q&A segments and our news and updates. Is that getting in the way of the gameplay videos? Do you like it? I personally like it, so if you don't like it, I may ignore you. Um, no, uh, I do appreciate your feedback. And speaking of great feedback, the, the ideas you guys have been submitting for our Rogue, I mean, I've been loving reading what you guys have been coming up with. You guys are thinking of stuff I'm not even thinking of. <laughs> No surprise, I'm sure, to some of you. But uh, no, it's been excellent contributions we've been getting. I can't wait to execute uh, the turn here. I'm just going to go get Luke and bring him down here, and we'll start the hero phase. So Luke's back, and we're ready to do our rogue hero phase. We got lots of great submissions from our users, and we chose the submission by Piranha483. He wants to attack this weaker orc smasher. He wants to use the positioning shot. It's going to give an attack modifier of what? Seven. Yes, an additional 7 to our roll. So let's roll. We need to get a 15 or higher. A 16 plus 7? Well, geez, we didn't even need the bonus. That is higher than the Orc Smasher's AC. So we're going to do an additional damage. There's already one damage on it. That's enough to defeat it. So we're going to remove the model. Now the next challenge is which of the monster cards do we remove? Because the rogue isn't the one controlling the Orc Smasher. Um, so what we have to do, as we explained earlier, is go clockwise through the players and find out who has the next Orc Smasher card. And it's Vistra. So we're going to take that card. And it doesn't go into a discard pile. We actually get to keep this. You know why? Mm -hmm. Two experience. Two experience points on this card we get to collect. We can use that later. If we get five, we can use it to level up or to get rid of an encounter card that we don't want. So we're going to keep that. Also, what else do we get? Treasure card. Treasure card, exactly. So let's see what this says. This is Thieves' Tools. Small pins, wrenches, and picks are organized in a leather pouch. So this is something a player can play immediately, and they gain a plus four bonus to rolls to disable traps while this item is in play. So here's the catch with treasure cards, though. We do not have to give it to the person who defeated the monster. We can give it to any of our heroes. Our heroes are very generous, and they want to share with each other. Until they actually get the treasure, then they get very, very greedy, and they will not share it. You cannot pass treasures around. But any one of them at the beginning can get the treasure. So let's give it to someone who might need this the most, someone who might get hurt mm. if they get stuck in a trap for too long. And who, who do you think has the lowest defenses here? Our wizard? Yep. I agree. So we're going to give this Thieves tool to our wizard. Hopefully help Heskin get out of any tight spots he may find himself in. And because it's the end of the hero phase now, we're going to remove the Day's token from our rogue. And now it's time to move on to the exploration phase. Now, because our hero did not move to the edge of a tile, we're not going to be revealing any new tiles. What do we have to do instead? Do you remember? Uh, get an encounter card. Exactly. Time leap. It's a curse. You fall through a rift in reality as unfathomable energies wrap the space around you. You are cursed. <laughs> okay, that doesn't sound good. Place this card on your hero card as a reminder. Remove your hero from play. Draw a monster card and place its figure in the square your hero disappeared from. So let's just do this one thing at a time. I'm going to remove our rogue from play. Put it over here in the time warp. Draw a monster card. Another orc smasher. Can you believe it? It's okay. <laughs> this is a cavern full of orcs. We're going to give this over here to Tarak. Um, at the start of your next hero phase, place your hero on any tile. Well, that's interesting. So our rogue mm. is kind of getting thrown through time and they can come back anywhere. It's almost, um, good. 
good because then he could like put him right there and then he wouldn't have to move. He just start packing right away. Yes. Move over here. That's true. So this this might actually be good. I mean, we've brought up an extra monster, which isn't great, but but it could be good in the end. We'll see. So now we can move on to the villain phase, and so all of the monsters that uh, this hero, uh, Tarak, controls now get activated, and that would include the Orc Smasher that just came out. So let's just look at the card here, see what it says. Uh, if it's within one tile, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks with a heavy mace. Well, as it turns out, it is close, to, equally close to all of the uh, heroes on this tile, so maybe we should have it go after our strongest, bravest hero. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to move it here, and we're going to attack Vistra. So we're going to roll the dice, we're going to add 9, and see if it's higher than your AC. Yes, it is, unfortunately. And does 1 damage, so we're going to remove a damage token from you, Luke. Thank you very much. And now, it is the end of the villain phase, and we can move on to our Vistra Dwarf Fighter's turn. All right, it's your hero's turn, Luke. What do you want to do? So in some days, I guess I'll just do Sure Strike. Okay, and what does your sure strike give you for a bonus on your roll? Eleven. All right, if he's adjacent, he gets a plus eleven of bonus when he attacks with this sure strike. Oh, better roll that again. An eleven, plus eleven, twenty-two. <laughs> That's more than enough to hit this orc smasher. We'll put a damage token on it. Wait. Now it's the exploration phase. And because we get, didn't get to the edge of a tile, we don't get to reveal a new tile. Instead, we have to flip over an encounter card. Hall of the Orcs. I knew it. I knew this was a bunch of... This is like an orc home. Maybe this is their vacation getaway. The crude holy symbols of Gurnish painted on the walls hint at the nature of this section's inhabitants. Draw five monster cards. Discard any monster that is not an orc. Shuffle the remaining cards and put them on top of the monster deck. So, we're going to draw five cards. Grell, Kobold Dragon Shield. Another Kobold Dragon Shield a cave bear, and an orc archer. So it's saying discard any monster that is not an orc. So we get rid of four of those cards, put them in the monster discard pile, and shuffle the remaining cards, and then put them on top of the monster deck. So this way we know now mm -hmm. orcs are coming out next, at least one orc. So you can see if you would had three or four orcs in there, then all three of those would have come out yeah. in the next few turns. So now we can get rid of this encounter card. So that's the end of the exploration phase. It's the villain phase, but I just remembered something. At the end of Vistra's hero phase, this day's condition would have been removed, so I'll just remove that now. And for the villain phase, nothing's going to happen because Luke has no monsters to activate, which is great. That was one of the benefits of getting rid of that Orc Smasher earlier on, right? And so that's the end of our turn. We hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time. Okay, I think that uh, introduction went pretty good. All right, so. Andrew, aren't you finished cleaning up this money yet? I'm corporately sponsored now. I can't be doing this kind of grunt work. Let's go, you want your allowance or what? Come on. Listen here, young lady. I quit. Fine. <laughs>